Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, uh, February 4th. I want to thank all of you for coming in today. Even though it's we didn't have school today, I, I'm very impressed. You, you all got here anyway, and it's you know, all but two, two of you. Uh, I am recording this for those two people who are not in the room right now with me, and uh, you'll you'll watch it. So, yeah, uh, if you uh, if you didn't come in, maybe you didn't get the message that we're having class today anyway. I don't know. Uh, but watch this. It, it, watch this video so you'll know how to do your homework. Let me repeat what I put in an email that your homework is uh, the take-home quiz, of course, but also assignments A and B from chapter 16. All right. Here we go. Chapter 16 is on waves. Uh, Kaylee, where's my marker? Ah, here it is. <clears throat> Got it. All right, waves. We're in chapter 16 on waves. And what you'll see as we move through this is that waves have a lot of similar features to uh, angular motion, to uh, simple harmonic motion, a lot of the same ideas. What is a wave? A wave is a disturbance in some medium or even some waves where there is no medium, it's passing through, but there's a disturbance in, in it that moves. The motion of a disturbance from one spot to another is a wave and it's important that you realize that energy is what's being transferred in a wave. Energy is being transferred. All right. Uh, there are different kinds of waves, two in particular. We're going to talk about those two. And I'm going to demonstrate those two in just a moment. But the two kinds of waves are uh, transverse waves and... Number two, uh, longitudinal. All right, what's the difference? Transverse waves can be drawn like this. These are transverse waves. Imagine this is a string. And the string uh, was here along the dash line when it was pulled straight. But then... Uh, someone created a disturbance at one spot that made this part of the string go up. And then after it went up, it came back down. And after going down, it went back up. And after going up, it went back down, up and down. But, but that causes the, the spot next to it to go up and down like this. And so there's energy actually being transferred from here where I created the disturbance over to there. Energy is transferred. Now, the transverse wave is called transverse when one part of the medium is moving perpendicular to the motion of the wave. You see, the, the actual, if this is a string, one point on the string is just going up and down. But the wave is moving from left to right. So if the motion of the medium is perpendicular to the motion of the wave, that's a transverse wave. Longitudinal waves are when they are parallel. If whatever the medium is scrunches up right here, it squeezes together, it compresses, and that area of, of compression moves to the right. Uh, maybe you'll be uh, right next to this area of compression is an area where it, the, the particles are not squeezed together. We call that rarefaction. But over here is another compression. Here's another rarefaction. Here's a compression. Here's a rarefaction. That's a longitudinal wave. And you see the particles now are moving left and right. The particle is going like this. See, see, see my hands? The particle is going like this. But the wave is moving to the right. Therefore... 
the motion of the particles is parallel to the motion of the wave. That's a longitudinal wave. I'm going to demonstrate it with a spring. So pause, if I know how to pause this, uh, how, how, do I, how do I pause this? Here I got it. All right, thanks Kelvy for showing me how to pause that thing. Now, uh, you're looking at the floor, and on the floor I have, here, let me move it where you can see it. On the floor I have a slinky spring. And I'm going to cause a wave to go from here, that direction, to there. And you tell me which type of wave it is. Here we go. You see that? Let me, let me try it again. There's a wave moving from this hand to this hand. Now, is that, uh, Austin, is that longitudinal or is it transverse? Right, it's, it's transverse because the, the particle, one coil of the spring is going up and down and, or in this direction, whereas the wave moved that direction, they are perpendicular. See, as the wave moves this way, one particular coil just goes this way and that way. And that's it. But the wave was moving perpendicular to that motion. Transverse wave. Now, here's another kind of wave. Tell me what this is. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a meaningless bell. Ignore that. Yeah. Yuhan, what is that? Come on, Yuhan. You, tell me. No, in English. Right. That is a longitudinal wave. Very good. Uh, because one particular coil of the spring moved this way and back as the wave moved through it, this way and back. But the wave was also moving that direction. They're parallel. All right, pause again. Austin, how do I pause this now? Is it this button or this one? All right, here we are. We're back. Those are the two kinds of waves, transverse longitudinal. Sometimes longitudinal waves are called compressional waves because the particles compress and then move apart. Yeah. Hey, which one of these do you think sound waves are? Do sound waves move like this, transverse, or do they move like this, longitudinal? Well, the word compressional may have given it away because sound waves are compressional waves. Uh, sound waves are longitudinal. Yeah, they are. They require the medium to, to compress. In uh, most cases, that's air, molecules that compress together. And then that area of compression moves throughout the room, and all of you in the room hear my voice. Yeah, okay, let's move on. What is it about a wave you can measure? All right, what is it about a wave you can measure? What do you think, Nate? The, name one thing you could. Yeah, you could, yeah, exactly. You can, here, let me draw this wave so we can point to it. There's a transverse wave. This, again, this dashed line represents the equilibrium position. That's where it was before the wave moved through the medium. And so as the wave moved through, the medium moved up and down. This, this part up here is called a crest. This part down here would be called the trough. Uh, the crest is up high, the trough is down low. So, right, Nate, one thing you could measure is the distance from one crest to another crest, and we would call that the wave length. Wave length is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's the length of a wave. You'd measure it in meters, SI unit, meters. Uh, uh, the symbol for wave length is the Greek letter lambda. Lambda. You know, Kaylee, lambda. Uh, have you, Natalie, do you know the Greek letters? 
course, yes. What is this one? Right, lambda. Okay, lambda in physics, or at least in wave physics, stands for wavelength. We will use that symbol uh, for wavelength. It's the, it's the distance between two corresponding parts of a wave, like between two crests. That would also be between two troughs. It would be between this point and this point. Uh, so two, two uh, corresponding points on two consecutive waves. That distance is the wavelength measured in meter, meters. All right, so that's one thing you can measure, yeah. the wavelength. What else could you measure about waves? What do you think, Jaden? Yeah, in other words, the the number of waves, see, you're getting this from our, our previous study. That's very good, Jaden. The number of waves that pass by each second. In angular motion, we talk about the number of revolutions per second. Uh, or in simple harmonic motion, the number of oscillations back and forth per second. Well, here we're talking about the number of wave crests that pass by in one second, and that would be, yes, the frequency. We've studied frequency and used that term before, and so here it is again, F-R-E-Q-U-E-N-C-Y. Frequency, lowercase f for the symbol, and again, frequency would, in this case, be in waves per second. Uh, there you go, waves per second, as opposed to oscillations per second. We studied in the last unit revolutions per second or radians per second uh, for angular motion. Waves per second, though, still is, is uh, in hertz. One hertz is one wave per second. All right. So yeah, we've got the length of the wave, we've got the frequency of the waves, and if you know frequency, if you know frequency, Eric, what else could you get from that? If you know frequency, you remember what? And right, the, the time, what's that called? The period. Eric, you are a genius. The period is capital T, uh, which is the time for one complete wave to pass through. And uh, you might remember it is the inverse of the frequency. Frequency is waves per second, so the period, capital T, would be, uh, would be the inverse of that seconds per wave, which is the inverse of frequency. And so that would be in seconds because it's the time it takes for one second. So the unit would just be the second. Yeah. Okay, we've got some good things here. What else could we measure about the wave? Uh, I think an obvious one that you haven't thought of yet. So, so Kara, what's one more thing? Yeah, what's one more thing we could measure? Exactly. How fast is the doggone wave moving? The velocity of the wave, yes. Uh, I'm going to put it over here. V for velocity. We've used speed or velocity a whole lot that's the that's the speed not the not the speed that the particle is moving up and down that's the, sp the, the speed of this wave to get to that end <laughs> yeah and of course that would be meters per second okay these are all things you can measure and if we measure all that doggone it, we need uh an equation we come up with a wave equation that puts at least some of these variables together, how are they related? Uh, so I'm going to take a time out again. I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay, I just needed to erase the board there. Um, if, if we remember that velocity is distance divided by time, speed, technically. Speed is the distance divided by time. Um, the distance in this case could be thought of as the wavelength. It's the distance between two waves. And if the distance is just the, the wavelength, that is the length of one wave, then the time for one wavelength to go by would be the period, wouldn't it? So this is lambda over capital T. Wavelength divided by period will give me velocity, but since period is one over f and therefore 
f is 1 over t. That's what I've got now. I've got 1 over t. See, this could be thought of as lambda times 1 over t, couldn't it? Sure. And what's 1 over t? Frequency. So the equation remembered by students all over the world for waves is this. V, the speed of the wave, moving from left to right across the board, that speed, is equal to lambda f. They keep ringing bells on a day we're not even having classes. What in the world? What in the world, William? Hey, William, are you feeling better? You, you were not at school yesterday. Good to see you today. Yeah. V equals lambda f. The speed of the wave is the wavelength times the frequency. And if you put units in there, uh, wavelength is in meters. Frequency is in waves per second. That's hertz. But a wave is not a real thing. So you get meters per second. <laughs> Velocity unit. See? Yeah. You're going to get meters per second if you multiply lambda times f. So there's our wave equation. That's on your equation sheet. We'll see it. V equals lambda f. Um, now we need to talk briefly about what depends on what. And then I'll be about through for today. You all can go back home and finish out your day off. Again, thanks for being here. All right. Um, the frequency you need to know depends on the source of the waves. Now the source of a wave is some vibration at the beginning of the wave. I really, if you can't read that because it's small, I don't know if you can read that or not. Source of the wave, vibration. If I go back to this string analogy, if I take the string and pluck it right here, like a guitar string, pluck, it makes this part of the, of the string go up and down. Well, that, that disturbance is going to be moved throughout, throughout the string. And so the source was me with my pluck, my vibration that started the whole thing. Okay, so uh, the frequency just depends on that. It depends on how often I'm plucking it. If I just plug it once, it just moves one time. But if I keep, if I keep pulling it up and pulling it up at a, at a regular rhythm, what's the frequency of my vibrations? Well, that's going to be the frequency of the waves, no matter what they go through. V depends on the medium it's passing through. So if a wave is going through one medium and then it enters a different medium, maybe it's a boundary where it goes from, from uh, one thing to another. And we'll look at more examples of that later. But if it changes medium, it'll change speed. However, it doesn't change frequency. Frequency just depends on the source back at the beginning. So lambda then is the true variable. Lambda is the variable that depends on v and f f depends on the source v depends on what it's passing through the medium lambda depends on those two things so if i change the vibrations at the source that'll change f but that won't change v as long as it's the same medium but if i change f it will change lambda because lambda will change with either way. lambda depends on f and lambda depends on v yeah that's great all right, I think I taught you most of what I need to teach you, but hang on, I'm going to check. I'll be right back. All right, there is one more thing I need to mention. And Reed, I think I heard you saying this earlier when I asked, what can you measure? And you said it, and I wasn't really ignoring you, Reed. It's just where I was going to go. But the amplitude, and we talked about amplitude Recently, with simple harmonic motion, the maximum displacement is the amplitude, uh, capital A for amplitude. In the case of waves, it still means maximum displacement. That's exactly right, Reed. That's what you said, which means if here, here are my transverse waves again. Here's where the, the, the medium would have been with no waves. The maximum displacement comes right in the middle of, of where, the or the, where the crest is. Is this distance right here. This is the equilibrium position. That's the farthest the medium ever gets from equilibrium. So just like with simple harmonic motion, 
the farthest away the block would get from the equilibrium position of the spring, that was amplitude, well, here it is also. The farthest away this medium gets from the equilibrium position, that's the amplitude. So if, if you can measure this distance right here, that's A, capital A. Should be the same over here. If you measure from equilibrium to the trough, that's amplitude. Okay, so good job there, Junha. Nice to see you. You've been sick forever, please. I hope you're well. You came today, so I'm very proud of you. Hope you're feeling better. Brianna, you haven't said anything today, but, oh, you did. You, you're the one who said amplitude. I thought it was read. Okay. Great. I'm very, very proud of this whole class. Um, Suho, nice to see you. All right, I think we're through. Again, your homework is the take-home quiz. Do not discuss that with each other because it's gonna count as a quiz grade, but you may look in your book all you want, your notes. Uh, a and B, use your book. Um, do both of those notes and some problems. You should be able to do the problem based on what I taught you up here today, and now I'm through. Uh, Hope to see all of you healthy and strong and well on Thursday. Have a good rest of the day. Bye.